this May is going to be filled with lots of ARC reading because I have so many that I need to catch up on. Hi, my name is Katie and welcome back to my channel. This is going to be my May TBR. Very excited. I have like a bunch of ARCs that I really need to catch up on. I've been like down the Kindle wormhole, like the Kindle Unlimited wormhole. And I want to focus more on like all the physical books that I've been accumulating because I have so many. So that's what this TBR is going to be focusing on. I will say to start off, I have some carryovers from May. So for audiobooks, I still need to read I'll Be the One by Lila Lee. And this one is about a plus size bisexual girl who wants to be a K-pop star. And it just, I feel like it's just giving me all like the good vibes. Also the cover model, I follow her on TikTok. She's amazing. She does like K-pop dance covers. I love her. I just want to read this book. Lila Lee also has a new one coming out called Flip the Script, which is like a bisexual K-drama one. Also want to read that one. Uh, I think I have it pre-ordered, so I probably will be on like the June TBR. But yeah, really excited to listen to this one on audio. And then the other two books that I've carried over, the first of which being To Marry Into Metal by Martha Waters. This was supposed to be my historical romance read of April, and I didn't get to it yet because I want to at least read one historical romance a month. Sorry, so this will be my carryover. It's about Lady Emily and Lord Julian, and basically like Emily is a spinster in the town. She cannot find a husband because of her dad's bad gambling debts and Lord Julian owns like this theater and it's like irreputable. So they form a marriage of convenience to like solve each other's problems and then they may have some inconvenient feelings. Just like a very funny historical romance and I've read other stuff from this author and really enjoyed it. So like I want to read this. I just haven't picked it up yet. I want to read my YA. I'm like committing to reading one of my YA fantasies that I have like at least one a month because I have been slacking on them and I still love them so much. So first up we have Dreams Lie Beneath by Rebecca Roth, which I've been wanting to read ever since I heard about it. And I also have this really cool like pre-order comic that I got in the mail. It follows Clementine and she lives in this town where every new moon magic flows and it brings nightmares to life. And the wardens are the only thing that like prevent this from happening. So Clementine is going to follow in her father's footsteps to become a warden and protect the people. But she is really like intrigued by the wilder side of magic and studying that. However, when two magicians come and like challenge her father's domain, she's drawn into a centuries old conflict. And so one of the magicians duels her father and so she seeks revenge on him, but as she gets closer to him, things are not as they seem. I love anything to do with dream magic and just like the theme of dreams. Like, I wanna get a dream like tattoo at some point. I don't know how that would work essentially, but yeah, I just love like the theme of dreams. And Rebecca Roth has stunning writing. So first I have some audiobook arcs that I need to get to this month. And these I have on NetGalley. So <laughs> my NetGalley count was a mess. Um, I had an 8% approval ratio and I had been approved for a lot, which is like really fortunate that I was approved for a lot. Um, but I, there was just no way that I could like physically get to all of them. Because when I first started my account, I just went like request crazy, not realizing that I'd have to like review all of them. So I've kind of abandoned that account and started a new account where I will like be making sure that I get to every single book that I request and get approved for and you know just be in better standing in neck alley. I have requested two audiobooks and I'm very excited to get to them. First is Tokyo Ever Dreaming by Amiko Jean and this is the sequel to Tokyo Ever After and this is about Izumi and she basically like is living a normal life as a teenager in California when she finds out that she is the heir to the Japanese monarchy and it's basically like a Japanese princess diaries. I loved it so much, giving all the feels. And then we have the sequel. So I'm so excited to read this one. I also have the audiobook for Emily XR Pan's new book, which I have never read anything from her before, but I've heard her books are very heart-wrenching and just like deal with a lot of complicated emotions. This one is an arrow to the moon. And her books tend to have like a touch of magical realism as well. So Hunter Yi is haunted by his family's past mistakes. The only thing that keeps him there is his little brother and a supernatural wind. And a bewitching girl at his high school. Then we have Luna Chang who dreads the future. Her parents' expectations are stifling so she begins to break the rules. And so it's described as a Romeo and Juliet meets Chinese mythology. And I'm really excited to like read just like this mix of like modern and magic and I just think it's going to be very beautiful. So now onto my pile of arcs. First up, we have The Wedding Season by Katie Birchall. I read Secret Bridesmaid by Katie Birchall last year and loved it. I would describe this more as women's fiction than a romance, but so cute and heartwarming. 
Um, so in the wedding season, we follow Freya and she's like the first in like the summer of weddings because as you know, everyone tends to like get married at the same time when you get older. And um, she basically gets left at the altar and now she has to go to all of these weddings and it's just like miserable for her. So her friends devise like this checklist of things that she has to do at the weddings and there's like dares and like fun things to like help her get through it. Sounds so adorable and fun. This will be my historical for May, the one that will count for May. Um, Reputation by Lex Croucher, and it's described as Bridgerton meets Gossip Girl. Those vibes are so fun. With a dash of Jane Austen in this Regency era rom com debut with a deliciously feminist twist. So we have follow Georgiana Ellers, who is sheltered, and she's spending a summer with her aunt and uncle at their English countryside cottage where she meets enigmatic Frances Campbell. And Frances is like the popular girl. And so Georgiana quickly falls in with Frances, who introduces her to her friends, and they are living it up. They have a world of drunken debauchery and lavish parties. And so then she meets a seemingly quiet uh, Thomas Hawksley, and sparks fly with Thomas is unimpressed with the company that she keeps. And it says, set in a time when one's reputation was everything, this hilarious debut explores sex, belonging, and status through the eyes of an unforgettable heroine whom Austin herself would have cheered for. So I'm very excited for this because it seems like a twist on like a typical Regency romance. So excited. Okay, this one is out in May, so I definitely need to tackle it. Um, I did not realize how freaking big it would be, but this is Forging Silver into Stars by Bridget Kemner. I have loved all of her fantasy novels. Um, I haven't dove into her contemporary backlist yet, but I may need to. So this is the follow-up trilogy to A Curse of Dark and Lily trilogy, which I finished last year. Loved. So now this is the spin-off of following a Tycho. And it says, when ancient magic tests a newfound love, a dark fate beckons. So I'm pretty sure this follows Tycho, and now we are set in the kingdom of Shilshalo, where magic has been brought back to the kingdom. So there are obviously people that are opposed to that. So now we have Callan and Jax, who magic has hurt them. Jax and Callan are joining an anti-magic faction. But then enter Lord Tycho, the king's courier, and he is tasked with like discovering who is like creating these plots against the king. Tycho was such a sweetie in the original trilogy, so I'm so excited for this. I love Bridget Kemner's writing. I'm such a stan. I'm also really excited for the sequel to Defy the Night because I loved that book, and I just love that works around. But yeah, I will love all of her fantasy books. I'm so excited for this one, and it's big. Next, I have two rom-coms, and I'm so excited for They're coming out in June, so I will read them in May. I'm going on vacation, so this will be a good time to read them. The first one is American Royalty by Tracy Livesay. Do you see the vibes on this cover? Like, So we have um, sexy driven rapper Danielle Duchess Nelson, and she's on the verge of like signing a deal that will change her life. But then an incident has gone viral and puts that in jeopardy. So she needs something to save her reputation. Then we also have Prince Jameson, and he is basically put in charge of like organizing this concert for the royalty. However, he did not do his research and he figured that some like person named the Duchess would be like a good music person to have uh, at this tribute concert in honor of the late king. So anyways, um, so she comes for the concert and sparks fly between them. And yes, I. I mean, the vibes are immaculate. Okay, then we also have another like Hollywood themed one and this is How to Fake It in Hollywood by Ava Wilder. And this is basically like, I don't know if you guys have seen like these TikTok conspiracies about like how a lot of these relationships between celebrities are like for PR. So this one is about two celebrities who get into a PR relationship and then they end up falling in love for real. I mean, look at the cover, oh, so excited. So that will be my month, however, however, I put on my story, I'll put a picture here. I wanna read one more fantasy romance series in the month of May because in April I read two really, really great fantasy romance stories. I will get a wrap up up at some point. I know I've been behind this whole year. It's okay, it's coming. It's gonna be the fantasy romance so that I at least read the first one this month. And that is going to be Guild by Raven Kennedy. This is the Plated Prisoner series. I have the traditional regular paperback and the hardback. Both of these you can actually buy on Amazon. This one isn't limited or anything. It's just what the hardcover looks like. And it's so pretty. Like if you take off the cover, I love that. I just love when so much like detail is put into these. Um, but yeah, also the regular paperback 
is stunning as well. Like this is the cover page. I got a signed copy. Uh, let's see. Like that. So this is a King Midas retelling. I actually don't know which one I should annotate because I, I'm afraid that the spine is going to be like too tight. You know, sometimes they come too tight, but I don't know. This one's really pretty. We'll see. Maybe you should tell me which one would be the better one to read and annotate from down below. And the tagline is a gilded cage is still a prison. So this is a King Midas retelling and we follow Orin and she's basically like the King Midas is favored and she's gold touched. So she's completely gold. So she like thinks that she is like this beloved figure of King Midas, but she's like not allowed to leave the castle and she's very restricted in her life. And then she, like she begins to question everything sounds so good it just sounds so good i mean this is beloved of book talk and i love fantasy romance i heard it is like pretty dark so i will be needing to look up the trigger warning before i start and you should do so too if you want to read it but yeah i've heard it feels with some like really dark themes but i'm ready the fourth one is coming out in may as well so yeah we'll see there i will hopefully at least get through the first three but i'm just putting this one on my team just the one and the last book for my TBR is going to be Luminous by Mara Rutherford. This is going to be my YA like backlist pick for the month. And <clears throat> I really love Mara Rutherford's uh, Crown of Coral and Pearl. And so I wanted to really pick up this standalone from her. It's about like star magic. Look how pretty. So Leora has shown from within ever since a star collided with her home when she was a child. So she spends her life indoors, only going outside when her magic can't be detected on the brightest of days. If she is discovered, that means that the king's warlock, Darius, would come and steal her power. But when her worst nightmare comes true, if Darius doesn't take her, but he instead demands that her younger sister be taken to the capital. And then after that, her childhood friend and the only one that knows of her power, Everin, goes missing after Darius's visit. So to find Everin and save her sister, she must embrace the power that she has always been afraid of. And uh, I love just like star powers and just like these kinds of books. This cover is so pretty. I'm also really looking forward to Mara Rutherford's next book, The Poison Season. This is one of my favorite covers like ever. Just saying. So that is my massive May TBR. Lots of arc reading. But I'm very excited. Let me know what you are most looking forward to reading in May and have some fun reads books and I'll catch you guys in the next one.